Hi folks, Len Costa here with thepilotreport.com and in this video demonstration today I'll be showing you how to use the Avcaddy electronic flight bag. The uh, options on the bottom, well uh, the next option after this main screen is the flight plan screen. Here you can go ahead and file a flight plan, view your stored flight plans, cancel your flight plan, or close your VFR flight plan and you can also create an aircraft profile. I've also gone ahead and already filed a flight plan so if you click on the view stored flight plans you'll see that there's one here at the top for uh, Frederick to Northeast Philly. You click on that and what it's going to tell you is that the uh, status was that filing was successful and time and route, the fuel duration and the time that it was filed with air traffic control. You have some options below to go ahead and view that flight plan as the way you've entered it if you choose or you can pick, uh, pull up your departure briefing for Frederick or your destination briefing for Northeast Philly. Okay, now that I fast forward through that excruciatingly long load time, and I'll tell you at this point it was over 45 seconds, and this is using high-speed Wi-Fi, not the 3G network, what you're going to get is uh, the information for my point of arrival, which is Northeast Philly Airport. It's going to give you your, ta uh, your METAR, the uh, TAFs, and followed at the bottom by any NOTAMs for the airport. So that's how you would use the uh, the destination um, the destination and arrival briefs from Viewed Store Flight Plan. If you had an IFR flight plan in here, you could go ahead and cancel that. And supposedly you're able to close your VFR flight plan, but as we see, mine's not available here. I don't know if that's because it's not open or active, but I'm not able to uh, access that right now. Now going over to the next tab is the chart tab, and you have access to the U.S. Uh, sectionals. IFR low and route charts, terminal charts, and the uh, instrument approach procedures. Showing you um, the sectional charts, you can see again anything that's green means it's been cached, anything that's gray means it has not. And we'll go ahead and pull up Washington. Now what you'll see here that's nice about this uh, application is it does actually allow you to look at the chart margin. So as this loads a little bit more here on the screen, you can see the chart margins here on the side. So unlike some of those other products out there, you do have access to the chart margins very easily. Okay, so we have uh, access to the margins. We know what information is in there. That's fine and dandy. So what I'll do here is I'll just give you a quick demonstration of the features here. On this first option, you can go ahead and click this page turn and you can tell it whether or not you want to be in the planning stage or the GPS stage. In planning, you have the option to cache that chart for offline usage. Uh, the next option for GPS here is actually when you're going to be using it in flight to, uh, to be able to give you your lateral uh, margin, your vertical margin. You can center on your position, lock your position, and here's a neat option here, auto change chart. So as you're flying, it will actually advance to the next chart for you. To create a flight plan, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty simple. You'll click on the magnifying glass, and up in the top here, uh, it's basically the magnifying glass is an option to search for airports, waypoints, any sort of navigation aids, uh, latitude and longitude, or by identifier. So I'm actually going to use this function for the purposes of planning a flight. So I'm going to go, uh, like we talked about earlier, from Frederick, Maryland to Northeast Philadelphia's airport. So I've uh, put in my point of departure, my point of arrival. I've selected the option is route. I'll go ahead and click search. So it's going to go ahead and search this. And there it is. You'll see the item now has drawn a line from, uh, from a Frederick Airport to Northeast Philly. If your route followed on another chart, say for instance we were going to go to uh, Teterboro, okay, what you'll see here is the blue line is drawn on the map, but what happens here, you see me as I advance, it's once it hits the chart margin, it's gone, okay? So this application does not allow you to access your full map um, or to display your entire route on one seamless screen, okay? So that's one thing that I don't care for in this application. Um, using the wrench option, you can add to um, your latitude and longitude and place a pin there, okay? You could also display your flight log and the one thing about the flight log is there's no way to amend it or add waypoints. The only way to add waypoints is go ahead, going back to the search function that I was showing you earlier, and then adding them in 
between uh, your point of departure and your point of arrival. So that's kind of obnoxious to me. You can turn your TFRs on or off, which that is a nice function. Look at right there. We know that I'm um, uh, between the uh, the DC TFR and the Camp David TV, uh, TFR. And back in GPS mode, you'll see down at the bottom it's giving you your altitude, your ground speed, your heading, and your track here in the lower right. So I'll go ahead and show you what happens when you want to cache a map. So you click the fully cache button and what you'll notice is that it's going to try and download this sectional. Now as I mentioned this seems pretty slow to me. If you were trying to download a section of the country, multiple sectionals or charts, it would clearly take quite some time. One of the other things, uh, like I mentioned, it does have the IFR low and route charts. Say for instance I want to plan using, uh, using the screen here. I will double click on the screen and I can pick the area that I've clicked on, whether it's the airport, whether it's the navigation aid, a latitude and longitude point, or any waypoint in the area. So we'll go ahead and pick the Detroit Lakes Airport, and I want to depart there. Okay, so now what it's done, and it also gives you an option to remove. Um, below that is information about the airport. And uh, it gives you information about the airfield, more planning options. If there's any SIDs or STARS, they'd be displayed and uh, terminal approach procedures as far as instrument approach plates and you could also view your weather, TAF and uh, METAR. So that option does exist by double clicking. However, in light, unlike some of your other products, your flight planning products, you'll notice that I do not have the ability as I try and move this route on the map, I cannot move it around. There's no rubber banding like there are in some of the other products. So it does have instrument approach plates. So let's go ahead and pull up the instrument approach plates for Frederick. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the ILS Runway 23. This is how it displays the charts. Not too bad, right? If I want to zoom in, however, look what happens when I zoom in and I release my fingers. It resets the zoom, okay? So you can't necessarily keep a nice fully zoomed uh, view of the plates here. Whenever you release it goes back to a smaller view. Now these charts do not have geolocation on them so as you're flying you will not see yourself referenced on the chart in any way. All right. The next option here is to look at TFRs. Any TFRs that are in, currently in the country will be pulled up here. Now it tells you when it was last updated both the date and the time. Watch what happens in this application when I pick a NOTAM or a TFR. The application crashes. If I go ahead and go back in, I'll show you this is not just a one-time occasion. If I go ahead and I pick another completely separate TFR, the application crashes. Basically, the user interface, I think it's kind of plain. I would probably rate that at three stars. The caching ability, I'm definitely going to give a two-star rating because it's slow. As you noticed, it's uh, not exactly fast to, to cache and save these these charts to the iPad device. Mapping, I'm going to give it a three star rating because you cannot see the whole route. As I showed you, you can't see the whole route from your point of departure to point of arrival if it overlaps uh, um, you know, between sectionals. The flight planning, I would give three stars because you cannot add waste, um, waypoints very easily and there has no rubber banding. The only weather it has is METARs and TAFs. It does not show you radar, it does not show you satellite, in fact there's no other weather images of any kind so I would give the weather a two star rating. So overall I would give this application a three star rating. Um, this has been an AvCaddy video review by thepilotreport.com. I'm Len Costa. To download this application, visit thepilotreport.com forward slash avcaddy. And uh, clear skies and calm winds, everybody. Take care.